Oh no, I just realized that this is a this is a lot of stripes going on. It's a it's a lot of stripes going in a lot of different directions and colors. <laughs> Lauren, welcome back to my channel. I feel like pip today. I can't hear anything, my ears are plugged. I've got like one nostril that's working right now. Your girl is in rough shape. But we are gonna power through today because I am so excited for this video. My thrifted collection from the last couple weeks is getting seriously out of control and I'm not mad about it in the slightest. Between the thrifting that we have done in Venice and Santa Monica in episode one, the Kardashian and celeb neighborhoods last week, I need a second closet possibly. Like it's a lot, which I feel like has been really good because the thrifting has been really good. So obviously those to go hand in hand. Anyways, today's thrifting adventure, thrift flips, thrift DIY, episode three, thrift flips and finds, nail the again, even though I'm sick. We are going to the biggest thrift store in LA. And like guys, when I say it is the biggest thrift store, this place is like the size of an Ikea. Like it is so big, it just kept going and going and going and going and going. Anyway, super excited to show you guys all the things that I found and I've got some super fun DIYs planned for some of my favorite pieces. Also, this spot was not super close to my house so I did a little bit of vlogging on the way. I am so excited to see what we can go find today. It's called St. Vincent de Paul and it's like near the downtown-ish area of LA, which I feel like is gonna be super interesting for things that get donated there. I also just realized that I have not been paying attention to my navigation at all. We good though, we good though, we good. I have a few friends who thrift here all the time, like, on a monthly, weekly basis. And they've kind of given me like the insider scoop on how to best approach this place because it is so insanely massive. But apparently stores like Restoration Hardware, Zoomies, Nordstrom Racks, there's a ton of other brands that take all of their brand new stuff here that just never sold or they have excess of. So apparently the prices are incredible and the finds can be like next level. I'm so excited. It's a Tuesday today and I've always heard that like mornings of the weekdays are usually pretty chill. Also, I'm not on any kind of schedule today, so we can take our time, go through everything. That feels like a little overwhelming, but we gonna take our time. We gonna peruse through all the regs. I'm so excited. I watched a few other vlogs of people who thrifted in this store, and they left with bags on bags of things. And I feel like just like the rate that I've been thrifting, I'm not looking to buy a ton of stuff. I'm going for quality, not quantity. But, oh my god, I'm so excited, guys. So we've got uh, 16 more minutes in the car, and then we about to get our thrifting on. Okay, so as I mentioned, the full name of this place is the Society of St. Paul de Vincent Thrift Store. And it's kind of like in the downtown-ish area of LA, which is also such an interesting location because I feel like that means donations come from literally all over this city, since it really is our downtown area. I've heard that this place gets freaking psychotic on the weekends, so definitely recommend going on a weekday if you can. I went around 10 a.m., 11 a.m., and it honestly was still like, like I feel like I had a shop with like my elbows up. Like not actually, like we, we not we not violent or anything, but it was definitely busy. Holy, this place is massive. I'm not entirely sure where to start. I got a cart though, thinking that I'm hopefully gonna find a lot of stuff, but like literally as soon as you walk in, they have brand new unworn Ted Baker suits. So there's that. Oh my God, okay, so I feel like I just gotta like pick a rack and start. Start. This is crazy. I don't know what to do. The biggest section of this thrift store was definitely women's clothing. Honestly, I was so disappointed that the men's section was so small. Also, like, hello? Like, what? Like, what? Like, it's 50 50 women to men in the world. I just, like, I don't understand why the men's section was so small and the women's section was, like, sprawling. Like, this thing was huge. Huge. Okay, so we're about an hour and a half in and I've got some decent stuff for sure. Some like fun DIY ideas. Ugh, I'm not gonna lie though. I had super high hopes for the men's section, but honestly the men's section is so small. My favorite section is the men's graphic tee section and it was weird. There was barely anything. There was maybe half a rack and I was so stoked for the graphic tees, but it's just not in the cards today. It's not in the cards. Honestly, 
if I was gonna put a number to it, I'd say it was like 80% women section, 10% men section, and 10% kids section in terms of clothing. They had another massive section of the store for vintage furniture and household items. Dude, it just keeps going and going. Ooh, these are so fun. Oh my gosh, this place is literally never ending. I keep feeling like we're done and then there's more and then we're done and then there's more. But the main section that you first walk into was all clothing and pretty much all women's clothing. This was definitely, definitely, definitely one of those places where you need to go into, like in the zone. Like this is a place where you are gonna spend multiple hours thrifting through so many different racks of stuff. Oh my gosh, okay, so I feel like I've barely gone through any racks here and it's already been so long. The other thing too is that I don't think I realized this until today, but like I have to go through the racks with my left hand, I guess, looking at the front of the shirts. I feel like I've been thrifting for so long and I just now realize that I have like a very certain method of doing it. The store is organized obviously in men's and women's section and then narrowed down to the article of clothing but other than that there is no rhyme or reason. It's not messy per se but it's literally just so big that like you need to bring a snack, you need to bring hydration, maybe some headphones to get your head in the game. Gotta get it, get it, get it, get it, head in the game. Watch me get copyrighted. They have a color-coded discount system that I haven't seen at any of the thrift stores I've been to recently. So if an item had a yellow tag, it was 25% off, a green tag was 50% off, and a white tag meant that the item was a dollar twenty. A dollar twenty. That's literally cheaper than my coffee order at Starbucks. That is so crazy affordable. They also had a rack that was just one dollar flat. Oh my god. What? Literally, this is what is this? At all? Swim festival? This sounds like a nudie thing. I'm scared. I think I should Google this before I put this anywhere. <laughs> okay, it's in LA. Uh, Rick and Morty musical experience. I don't know what I would do with this. I don't think I need this. I'm gonna get it. <laughs> I also thought that it might be helpful and I've seen a few of you guys asking for like my top thrifting tips and thrifting best practices and I feel like this episode specifically is the perfect place to share these tips because if you do not have a game plan in a place this big it is so easy to get overwhelmed and just give up and leave with nothing and never come back. My first tip and definitely the first thing that I do whenever I go to thrift stores is I familiarize myself with my favorite section. So for me you guys know my men's graphic t-shirt is like the number one when I'm thrifting so I always head to the men's section first, honestly, to see what kind of cool vintage t-shirts the men's section might have. My next favorite section is probably women's jackets and sweaters, but even just having one or two favorite sections and just really diving into those two sections, it's a great way to find some gems and also give yourself a little bit of a game plan when it's overwhelming. Next tip is I like to shop by color and texture. Color is definitely the one that grabs my attention first. I'm one of those people that needs to touch everything as I'm shopping, like no matter where I am in the world, I'm just like a texture and a sensation person, so I'm always like, ooh, velour, ooh, tweed, ooh, silk. And so it's a combination of that, but also seeing colors or prints or dyes that catch my eye and make me pull something off the rack to give it a second look. Another great tip as thrift stores get better and better at pricing things, like they are onto us. I feel like they see a designer item or something that's of really great quality and they hike the price up. Gone are the days when you could get some amazing thrifted Levi jeans for like $4 because they know they're getting smarter. Anyways, a lot of the time, the designer pieces or the super high-end or high-quality pieces will be a little more expensive than the other pieces in that section. Oh my god, damn, adaption. These are like $300 jeans. They're 30 bucks and like kind of a lot for a thrift store, but that's always like the telltale sign that it's probably something kind of designer. I saw this first and I was like, there's no way a cheap brand has a logo and a back pocket emblem this nice. I wasn't familiar with that brand, but I was like, ooh, these look like they probably expensive. The price tag trick definitely doesn't always work, but a lot of the time the most coveted items will be a little more expensive. Okay, so I learned this like semi-successful thrifting hack. I hate trying things on, so it definitely like depends on how stretchy the jeans are, but if you put the waistband around your neck, it's like an indication-ish, like super-ish if it's gonna fit or not. Ooh, she tight, I don't know, I don't know. Also just like how it's like my jean cape. 
Okay, so this is what the current state of the cart looks like. This was such a good find that I found in an aisle that I had already been down. So I don't know if someone put it back, but got lucky with this one. This is like this really cute polo that says baby girl on it. It's a fun blazer here to belt. It's that weird, like very questionable scarf uh, that we now know is an LA music festival with Rick and Morty-esque things. This is a NASA hoodie, this like cute knit, but also has a collar, some denim. Guys, this was not the worst thrift haul I've ever had. I'm so excited to go home and figure out how to DIY all of it. I'm stoked. Okay, so the first piece and the first pair of bottoms, I think we found. For your blue zone, is this the first pair of bottoms? I think it is. Yay, first pair of bottoms. So those jeans that I had didn't end up fitting, but these fit literally so so perfectly, it's insane. I feel like this never happens. I'm stoked about it. I have a really fun DIY in mind for it. These were $6 with a 25% off tag on them, which ended up being $4.50. I'm so stoked about these. These are something that I would probably pay $40 for at Urban Outfitters or even more at Free People. So I'm so stoked on these. Okay, so on Amazon, I got these little heat activated crystals, these little jemmies. And there's this pair of shorts that I've had my eye on for so long that have outlines of like rhinestone stars on them and they're $95 and because these shorts were $4.50 thought that you know we could splurge on some $8 gems and make these ourselves I've never worked with these before so I'm really really hoping that it's just like set and press with an iron a little nervous I'm not gonna lie I just like really don't want to mess the shorts up because they fit so well is the problem and where I'm stressed so um let's do it <laughs> Guys, Matt and I just spend so much time trying to figure out how to make, oh my god, a perfect star. I am way too much of a perfectionist to do this. It's taking over my life. Anyways, I think we're just at the point where I just gotta do it or else I will be here all day messing with it. I think this is as good as it's gonna get. Like, it's definitely a star. Like, you know what it is. It's just like, are you Patrick star or are you cute star? That felt mean on Patrick. Patrick, you're cute too. Ah! I'm so nervous that they're gonna move while I have the iron going. Ah, ah. Oh yeah, they on there. Ooh, they hot, they hot. Ooh, cute! Okay, that actually looks good. Okay, nothing made like a crazy move. No one went rogue. Okay, let's do another one. Next piece is a plaid blazer that was $14.99. Retails for between $60 and $80. And honestly, I saw the print and I was like, okay, I don't normally wear yellow. And I kind of stray away from yellow a lot of times because I feel like I am yellow. <laughs> I feel like that's not a good fashion tip. Like, I don't know, I just like have a weird thing with yellow. Anyways, found this, loved the print. And I actually made a TikTok already with this and like a little thrift store recap if you follow me on TikTok, at Lord DIY. And I'm so stoked because I feel like it is the perfect length. We gon' belt her with something cute. I have this black belt that has some chains on it that I think is gonna make it a little bit edgy, maybe a beanie or something like I did in the TikTok, but super stoked with this find. Also, I kind of feel like this follows the price tag thing. When I saw that it was $14.99, I was like, ooh, this is probably a pretty good brand because that's kind of expensive. and I'm not entirely sure where this is from. I don't recognize the brand name on the inside of the hoodie, but it's definitely brand new. It's never been worn. It's so soft. You guys know that like, I only do soft sweaters. I don't do the scratchy. I don't do the prickly. I don't do the, the yucky. I only do the soft and the fuzzy. She's soft. This was the first thing that I think I found as soon as I got there. And I am so stoked about this piece. I feel like you never see any kind of oversized knit that also has a collar. And I did a little bit of research into this brand because contemporary casual 
casuals. I was like, this looks very American apparel -y. So I was like, who is you? Where did you come from? Is you vintage? And the answer is absolutely yes, which is so cool. Apparently this brand, Contemporary Casuals, was super popping in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. It was like the godmother of American apparel. Contemporary Casuals walked so American apparel could run. Anyways, I have a super cute pink and red patch. I think I just want to hand sew on the side of it just to give it a little something something. But I'm so stoked for this piece. I feel like it's such a cool vintage find and I want to text my mom and see if she shopped at Contempo Casuals as soon as this video is done. <laughs> Coffee delivery? Yeah. Yes. Jeremy spotting, 433. Jeremy spotting, 433. Thanks, production assistant. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> we don't do plastic straws. Oh, the first sip of coffee. This DIY is about to get so much better now that I've had caffeine. Every time my brain looks at this, I'm like, it's good girl to be a. And I'm like, who made this patch? <laughs> it's good to be a girl. Very cute. Also, I chose to sew this one on instead because I've never actually ironed a patch onto like a knit fabric like this, but I don't think it would do well, especially because a lot of the times there's plastic, like tiny, tiny bits of plastic in this kind of fabric. So I think it might melt the sweater. Anyways, super easy, super cute. I feel like it's gonna be like Valentine's Day vibes. It's good to be a girl with no Valentine's Day plans. Jeremy. What are we doing for Valentine's Day? <laughs> I actually don't know. So, Jeremy, what are we doing for Valentine's Day? This next hoodie is a collaboration between Odd Future and Donut, which is a brand that you'd find like at Zoomies. It's pretty expensive. Also, at first I was like, okay, is this hand bleach? But it's so perfectly distressed, like here and here, and like even on the seams, it's perfectly distressed. I was like, okay, no, this like has to be made like this. But the bleach dye definitely caught my eye. And I don't know if this is something I want to crop, but like I feel high beast a if with this hoodie. Oh my gosh, okay, this was $2.50. Since. That is so freaking cheap. It was $5, green tag, 50% off. Just says baby girl, and it's like a white polo. I feel like this is very Brandy Melville S. I'm thinking about just tying it up or cropping it. I know you guys give me so much for just cropping everything, but like it's kind of an awkward length. It's pretty boxy right now. So I think cropping or tying up is definitely the move. I like wanna crop things, but everyone gets so mad at me when I crop things. Please stop bullying me for cropping things. Oh wait, 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 guys, okay. Oh my gosh, so I have never gotten more questions about a DIY anything since starting to use this little pizza cutter, but for fabric, they're called rotary cutters and they're the best things that have ever happened to me and I like don't know why I haven't been using one of these for my entire DIY career. Anyways, I bought four of these for you guys because I've gotten so many questions about them. So if you want one of these little fabric pizza cutters, go comment some scissor and pizza emojis on my last couple Instagrams and I'll uh, send you some, um, some rotary cutters. Honestly, I was getting stuff for the DIY and I saw them and saw how many people have been asking about them. I actually bought you guys a way nicer one than I have. This one has like a safety button, so no one's gonna like lose a finger or anything. We just YOLO with this blue one. She cute though. Anyways, I bought four of them, so happy random giveaway. <laughs> Last please, please. <laughs> and last piece is this. My brain is just so clogged with snot. I'm like, what even is this? What is this piece? <laughs> and, uh, and this last ple please. Please. <laughs> what is a please? And this last piece is this black 
velour oversized blazer. It's pretty big. Like I think it's a double XL. So I'm hoping that I can belt it up. But I do have some really cool trim that I want to put down the length of the sleeve. And I think I'll add a little something, something. So I feel like we've been having some really good luck finding oversized blazers that belt really well into dresses. So I was like, okay, how can I elevate this and DIY this to make it something a little bit new and something a little bit different? If you do live in LA, this place is worth an adventure too. It was a lot of fun and it's like a hunt. Like I feel like it's the thrill of thrifting that's just sucked me into being so in love with this series so far. So definitely worth a visit if you live in LA. And if not, please send me photos of your thrift finds. Like I truly think that it's actually the smaller cities that have the best thrifting because it's like the real vintage. Anyways, please tweet me your favorite finds. Make sure to check out episode one and two of Thrift Flips and Finds if you haven't seen them already. If you want to enter the giveaway for one of those little roller cutter thingies. Just go leave those little scissor emojis on a few of my latest Instagrams and I'll be choosing a few people to send them out to. They are so sick. You guys have been obsessed with them as am I. Mine's right here. It's my pride and joy right now. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed episode three of Thrift Flips and Finds. You can find me on all the other social media platforms in the down bar below and I will see you guys again on Sunday for another Sunday. Ah, wah! Okay, bye guys. Love you. My pretty little kingdom out here running the show.